I'm trying to think of a way to do this because I, I review these same shows over and over and over again. It hurts, doesn't it? And it, it kind of gets monotonous. Mm. I don't like uh, I don't like repeating my material. But uh, maybe I should quit some shows. You, you want should. this show? This should show? I quit this? Yeah. What, wrestling you want it five days a week without me? All right. Yeah. I'll think about it. Can we talk well, about anyway, money? Anyway, Cody came out to open up the show. Wait a second. And uh, I'll, you know what? Let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. Eh, I'll just do the report. Cody comes out and uh, talks about Brock Lesnar, who acknowledged him. And they hold up the big sign, Roman's Biggest Nightmare. So they're clearly going in that direction. They, they got a close-up of that one. But then Seth comes out after Cody says that he could beat anybody. And, you know, he says, if he can beat anybody, well, let's just try it. And uh, Seth Rollins comes out first with the Judgment Day. Finn Balor ends up attacking Seth. Brawl breaks out. Sami Zayn's music hits. He comes down to make the save. Sets up a six-man for later. I just did this report yesterday. Mm. I got to come up with a new idea for this thing. You know what I'm saying? Do it on Why don't you review Raw? No, because I don't want to. All right. Stupid. Fine. It's a silly show. It's, it's not hours. a stupid show. No, it was it, too long. Look, it, it's always it has too long. stupid segments, and that's unfortunately the case when you have a three-hour show is oftentimes, no matter how good it is, you get some stuff that doesn't hit. And when some of that stuff doesn't hit, it really doesn't hit. And it's painful, and it's a waste of time. You know, we can consolidate this show. I mean, we really could do this review in about five minutes each week unless it, you know, bears some other other type of fruit to talk about. I don't like to disappoint our loyal listeners. I don't know if you'll be disappointing them. Did you anyway, let's just cut up? to the chase here. So right. Sami Zayn ends up getting jumped later on in the show. I was trying to give you time for an idea. Actually, God, everything. Else. You know what's funny is like everyone makes fun of this show, but all of this stuff ties together. All right. Yeah. So anyway, we'll just go through this. We have As a six show man. Should should it not? We have a six man be... announced for the main event. Okay. Everything's got to be Twin Peaks. And then we have uh, Champa, Riddle, and Gable and Ricochet meeting with Pierce. Pierce notes, "Y'all lost. Y'all had a rough week, but you know what? I'm going to give you guys another chance. Four way, winner of this match gets Gunther for the Intercontinental Title. Now, this was stupid in the sense that the match they had was great." It was Ricochet, Riddle, Chomp, and Gable. It's Gable, uh, you know, he's from, uh, he's from Minnesota. He's, everyone loves him. He ends up winning. He celebrates with his, his kid who's got his little tiny singlet and, and ear gimmicks on. Everybody's all happy. But, dude, I saw this match last Monday and Gunther beat the death out of him. So why did you do that if he's now going to get a shot at Gunther for the title? Because I didn't think Can you imagine Tuesday. if he beats him? And and Honky's no. record ends up intact. No. no. Could happen, dude. No. Could happen. Oh my God. Honestly, the man's not does, even in the Hall of Fame, is he? Does anybody have an issue with Chad Gable beating Gunther for the title in a great match? Anybody? Yes. And saving Honky's record? No. What? Uh. All right. I still have Ricky Steamboat problems from 1987 about all of this stuff and and natural Butch Reed problems because the story always goes Butch Reed didn't show up and then Hulk said what about him brother and looked over at Honky and Honky got the shot and I love Butch Reed and I love Ricky Steamboat no come on Gunther wow well uh, Shinsuke Nakamura and Bronson Reed didn't have a lot of heat early, but they worked hard, and by the end, they got the crowd into it. And Nakamura ends up uh, avoiding the tsunami, which is very, very important here in Cannon Beach as well. And uh, he hit the Kinshasa to the back of the head and another to the front and got the pin, which led to a segment later. Raquel still not cleared. Ludwig Kaiser hit on Maxine. She wanted nothing to do with him, but it set up a match with Otis for later. We had a Becky promo where she's talking about the match with Trish next week. Zoe comes out, and as Zoe is sitting there talking about how she's the toughest woman in the division, the actual toughest woman in the division currently comes out. It's Shayna Baszler. She looks like she got hit by a truck. She's got this giant purple thing underneath her. She can barely move. She goes, I ran Ronda Rousey out of the territory. I'm the toughest woman here. And Becky's like, I got an idea. How about you two fight right now? 
And so they end up doing the match. Shayna ends up beating Zoe. She's so now wack, using dude. Ronda's finish, the Piper's Pit. Got the pin with that. You forgot about Zoe saying, I'm I'm going to run you out of here like Ronda Rousey was. It, this was not. Stop Hell, doing she didn't. this to her. No. She beat her. Then they had a segment backstage where uh, Finn Balor is chatting with old J.D. McDonough, who he says he's known for 20 years. Mm. So apparently J.D. showed up to train when he was 13. And Priest walks up, and they get in this big argument, and Rhea has to keep him apart and tell him to get on the same page. And then this slimy J.D. says, you know, probably not my place to speak, but seems to me that briefcase is coming between the two of you. So, Priest... Maybe you should just get rid of it. And Finn smirks, walks off with JD, and Priest is like, You little! So I think we can all see where this is going. Byron's with Shinsuke, and JD McDonough suddenly attacks Sammy. Sammy has a, uh inflamed bursa sack. Ooh. That sounds horrible. Looks worse. His elbow is like this big. It's like the His size elbow. of your... Your own fist on the back of the uh, the elbow. His elbow's Absolutely got a disgusting. Head on it. it does. Yeah. So uh, he's put out of action, which leads to Nakamura offering to team with the baby faces. And this numbskull Seth Rollins falls for it hook, line, and sinker. He's the only guy in the building that can't see where this is going. Probably because he's wearing those stupid yellow banana sunglasses. And walking around on balloons like he's going to go to the moon. Miz did a promo. L.A. Knight interrupts. And, uh, you know, Dave was, uh, he was right about this. You know, the, the, the thing about Miz is, Miz can, like, talk in the sense that he can say words in a professional manner. But he never says anything that's like, man, I can't wait to see these two guys have a match. Well, him and L.A. Knight actually had an excellent back and forth. And there's still something about The Miz where when he tries to do that, that serious, angry face, he's still got Miz's face. And so you're like, I can't take this guy seriously. Looks like, he, looks like he's... The last he's... time that you saw him upset was the night before, complaining about the fact he didn't have any Mike's Hard Lemonade. Well, he's, uh, he's angry at L.A. night. I've been here for 20 years. Look at you. He actually had a great line, which is, you strip away everything from me. You take away my wife. You take away my stardom, my charisma. What do you get? You get L.A. Knight. You're an Attitude Era fanboy cosplaying in the ring. And I was like, wow. That's pretty good. Wow. Like it, Mike. And L.A. Knight claims, you know, I've been going for 20 years, but I was on the outside looking in because guys like you, man, they'll beat you up and kick you out of the locker room and you'll just take it. But a guy like me ain't going to take it. I'm dangerous. Well, I'm finally here right now, and I'm going to use you as a stepping stone. Just and like Mrs. the NWA. Furious at this. And so L.A. said, prove me wrong. So, of course, Miz acts like he's going to leave. But then he jumps the guy. But Knight avoids the beating. He avoids the skull-crushing finale. He lays him out with the, uh, let's be honest, the Stone Cold Stunner. Mm. And uh, leaves him laying. This was a great segment. This was a legitimate great segment with The Miz. Viking Raiders called out anybody. It's the return of the New Day. And they beat them. Kofi was out for a long time with an ankle injury. But, man, he came back. He's doing springboards. He's doing dives. He's doing the whole nine yards. Looked great. And uh, it was good for what it was. They're back. We had uh, Judgment Day against Cody, Seth, and Shinsuke Nakamura. And story of this match is they get the heat on old Nakamura for a while. He tags in Seth. They get the heat on him for a while. He tags in Cody. Cody's making this big hot tag. And then Priest, as Cody is going for the crossroads on Finn, by the way, Priest saves Finn, as he's been doing repeatedly. He hits Cody with the briefcase behind the ref's back. Sammy runs down. He attacks Priest. The briefcase ends up in the ring. Finn grabs the briefcase, but Seth super kicks it into his face. Cody hits the crossroads, gets the pin. And then, of course, you know, Cody's happy, but Seth is angry. Cody's like, bro, it was a six-man tag. We won. And finally, 
Seth regr- ah, he shakes his hand. Let's go celebrate in the corners. They go to celebrate in the corners. And Nakamura's just sitting there in his corner, biding his time. Mm-hmm. And old Seth jumps down off the middle rope, and Nakamura Kinshasa lays him out. And so what I think is happening here, what I think is happening is they're going with Seth Rollins versus Nakamura for the world title. Because it doesn't make any sense to do Cody and uh, Seth for the world title because that's not the title that Cody's trying to go for. But they have to tease that they're heading towards the Seth-Cody match because it only makes sense that Cody just beat Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. He should be going for the world title, but I don't think they want to do that, and so they tease at the beginning of this show, but then they went a different direction at the end to give you a different match, and then presumably next week, like, Cody's going to come out to, you know, acknowledge Seth or whatever, and somebody's going to jump him, and then they split off into that feud. So it, they didn't, like, insult your intelligence by going, well, you know, this guy beat Brock, but he's not in line for the world title. It doesn't make any sense. They're they're acting like they're going in that direction, but they're going to give you something else for both guys, which I think is what they're doing, which I'm Slides fine with, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just fast forward all the way till after WrestleMania when Cody wins the belt, but his story is not finished yet because unlike his father, who was not able to merge both the NWA World Heavyweight and WWE titles, it will be his time to have to close that circle and then merge both titles to be the true undisputed champion. Well, you know, they could have him win Seth's title and then do a unification match, but, dude, I'm sick of unification matches. It'd be fine if you just, like, unified it and that was it, but unifying it and then making a new one? What was the point? So Ricky Starks comes out for a promo. God, this was the weirdest segment I have seen in I don't even know how long. Ricky Starks, last week, cheated to win the Owen Hart Cup. So this man comes out, and he is cheered. He talked about how much money he had, his expensive shoes, his expensive bag. Mm -hmm. He's rich, you see. So to review, if you cut a promo saying that you have expensive things like, oh, I don't know, a Tesla or a watch, and you only eat the finest steaks in the finest steakhouses, people might not like you. I have no idea what you're talking about. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.